drop out into the pond. The pond with no water. Yeah. But I don't think we have actually any boards in the dam, so no, it's not going to hold any water. Flow through. Here it comes. He got some muck boots. I don't have muck boots. It looks like it's still draining pretty well. Oh, almost, almost. Oh man, I keep I keep almost like mentally hopping down right there to go see, but I know better. This isn't bad. Yeah. I mean, it's sticky. I just track it all in my truck. The kids will be so happy to have the tent back. <laughs> Are those those kind of plastic rods on the side of that tent? Yeah. Yeah, I used to get a spanking with those things when I was a kid. Oh, that must have felt nice. Oh, you could hear them come humming through the air. They would make a whistle. Yeah. Wait, what would make a whistle? So your little tent there that your dad's pulling out, when I was a bad kid, I would get spanked with the plastic rods that hold that kind of tent together. And you knew it was coming because there'd be a whistle in the air. It would just come humming at you and then it would, and then it would hurt a little. A little? A lot. A lot sounds yep. a little more like- It was the anticipation Whoa. that was brutal. No, I take it back. The ones I got swatted with, I swear they were twice that size. <laughs> All right, well, the new dam is in. The beaver dam is out. So we should be able to get the pond back together and we won't have all the leakage around the side here. So, uh, yeah, it came together really nice. So today uh, we're warm enough for 65 degrees or so. So I am going to get that coat of chassis paint on the trailer and really make a big move towards getting this thing towards completion. Off camera, to kind of get an idea of the rest of the plan, I did thread the electric back through to kind of line that up. I set the fenders back on. And if you're looking here, this is coming through two layers of uh, rust uh, inhibitor paint there. So even with that, it tries to come uh, right on through. So we've got to get that chassis paint on there, continue to protect this. I do have the new hubs on here to find i had to really search for hubs that would fit on a number 42 spindle which had the inch and three quarter inner bearing inch and one quarter outer bearing i could not find anything that was on a uh, five by five and a half bolt pattern for that size spindle so i swapped out to these idler hubs when i ripped off those brakes i am going to have to get new wheels and tires to put on there so it makes this kind of a funky scenario for carrying a spare uh, long term i'll probably swap these out as well i don't know if these were from a i don't know a farm tire something like that but for the life of me finding these things is a huge pain i also started dry fitting and mocking out how i'm going to do the decking so getting an idea of how i've got to drill some of the holes um, utilizing my 3 8 inch carriage bolts putting those on uh, for today, this has got to come back off so I can get the paint on. But once I do that, I have my plan for how to move forward, get the rest of this down. 
So we're really starting to come to the tail end of this and, and just in time. The weather's really starting to fluctuate. I think I'll have a warm day today, warm day tomorrow, but we are now uh, mid-October. So uh, eh, we're, we're losing the warm stuff fast. So we're going to use a gloss back, excuse me, a gloss black pore 15 rust preventative permanent coating. Paint directly over rust. Designed for application directly on rusted, sandblasted, and seasoned metal surfaces. Dries rock hard. Non-porous, won't chip, crack, peel. Prevents rust from recurring. Okay. Sounds like we have game plan. Well, that stuff is some kind of special kind of heavy duty yucky but uh, I think it's gonna do the trick so that's one coat of the pour 15 on there put on as as best I was able um, but once it dries and I can poke my head around there more there'll be a few places to touch up ultimately I am gonna have to take these wheels back off to get behind there fully Up front here, I think I'm going to take this top member off, take these pieces off so I can secure it in as I've been doing. Because I don't have a great way to tie this in so it's not bouncing around off everything. So I think that'll come off. All the front has a coat underneath. Oh, and there we go. There's the first spot I missed. Missed the whole cross member there. So I've got a little more to do. But fortunately, got this on before weather's getting too cold recommendation is for two coats there was already a coat on here grant that a lot of that came off with scale and, and sanding ah, I might do that uh, I don't know I think it's gonna be a question of well as it always is question of weather and time but for now we're, we're really starting to get close I'll let this dry overnight we'll get the electric back in we'll start putting some of these uh, decking boards back in and then we'll finish that up so we're close. Finally, after uh, two days of rain, <clears throat> the pond is uh, finally just about back up. It's getting colder. I'm actually in a jacket today, but we did get that coat of chassis paint on and that came out really nice. And when it rains, the water just beads right up on here, rolls right off. Uh, if you notice on my arm though, I got a little bit of chassis paint splattered on my arm. This is uh, five days later and I still haven't got this paint off. So when it says don't get it on yourself, don't get it on yourself. So now that, uh, now that I did succeed getting the chassis paint on that I wanted, I'm going to get the electrical threaded back in, zip tied in. And we're going to put the deck boards down and hopefully move this thing a little faster towards completion. Because uh, it's starting to get to the point where it's just cold on my fingers to keep on working. So let's see if we can push this thing forward today. All right. <clears throat>
So this is a four pin flat harness. And I've got holes drilled in the frame so I can thread this all the way back and then zip tie it where, where it makes sense. Tell you what, none of the holes have lined up from when I cut them last week after the rain because the wood all warped and shifted. So I'm banging through my carriage bolts and mashing up the teeth, which is making this even harder. So moral of the story, when you cut them and dry fit them, install them because the wood is going to change shape. My deck is starting to go down, starting to take shape, except for this end where warping of the wood or poor measurement or all of the above means that the holes are just off a little bit. Especially right up here. So, hmm, uh, we'll have to figure that out. Speed square. All right, here's my tools and plan for putting down the decking. I've got my speed square, so I get a nice square end, cut it to length, lay it in, and then what I'm using. I have, uh, these are 3 8 inch, two and a half inch car carriage bolts. And I'm using a, uh, well look at that, 3 8 inch, that's why they're so tight. I drill this one through the wood and spin it so it leaves a mark on the chassis. Once I have that uh, mark, after drilling all the holes, I can take the wood up and then I use my step drill 
and a little bit of oil to finish putting the holes in the chassis. And what I've learned is do one and secure one because as the wood gets wet and moves, it becomes a big pain. So square it, cut it to length, drill it so that it marks the chassis, pull it away, step drill through, bolt it in, move on to the next one. And now with the paint done, the electric done, with any luck, I should be able to march right through this, is my hope. Now where did I drop that drill bit? So now I have my marks. Right where I want my holes in the frame to be to secure it. So now I'm just going to go through, so I get to reuse that hole. Drill all those holes and secure it. The other thing I didn't mention, but I'm doing is I'm I've had to uh, countersink a little bit for these carriage bolts because they're two and a half inches. They just I just have enough meat. I just have enough meat to get a good a good grip there if I give it a little countersink. So I'm going to stop there for now. Uh, so, got my method, so to say, for putting the decking down onto my fourth board now, which takes me just shy of the middle. So I'm actually going to come back at it from the other side. So I'll end up having four boards coming in this way, four boards coming in this way, and a narrow cut one up the center, just kind of for the symmetry of it. One thing that I have found, though, is uh, the trailer's not square. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know why I thought it would be square with a trailer like this, but it's not square. So all my square cuts are looking like a staircase staggering in on the end here. There's all my nice square cuts, kind of chopped, chopped because the frame isn't square. Ultimately, that doesn't matter. It's a utility trailer. It pulls nice and straight. So that's just an OCD thing. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, well, but getting close. Electric's in. Half the deck's down, so. Almost done.